All right, we're going to turn to Romans chapter 16. The Bible says that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Now it is important to understand that as we get closer to the last days, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's system in our world. And I believe a lot of people, uh, they get so much knowledge of the scriptures that we lose a proper balance and a proper focus as Christians. So a lot of people, they would know me as a person that tries to show a lot of interesting things about prophecy, end times, and conspiracies. But to be quite honest, we got to understand this, is that that's not what the Bible focuses on. Now that's something important to understand. So it's very important to understand that you got to understand if we get into the Word of God first, that's why whatever knowledge you find out there, you're going to see it already lined up with the book. But see, it starts out with the Bible. But the problem with a lot of people is that we go into the studies first. So we go into science first. We go into conspiracy first. We go into math first. We go into phil philosophy first. Now, this is the problem with every Christian that I want you to understand. The problem with every Christian is that we get like really great apologists uh, who defend the faith. Uh, my favorite is William Lane Craig. He's really good in philosophical arguments against atheists. But, the re but his interpretation of the Bible really stinks, to be honest. Now, the reason why I say that is not to be rude and mean, but because that guy has so much smarts in him, it's amazing how he interprets that Bible. He does not refer to such verses in the Bible as a millennial promise at the millennium, that it will literally happen. He instead resorts to philosophical quotes, like resorting to Jewish rabbinical sources to give a real interpretation. But I don't like that. A lot of people who are creationists, for example, very good in debunking evolution. One of my favorites is Jason Lyle. He got a PhD in astrophysics. And he's really good in defending the faith and, expo uh, and then exposing evolution through scientific lenses. But because of that, it blinds him from proper interpretation of the Bible. That's why he's not going to believe in a deep doctrine uh, such as the Genesis Gap or that there is a perfect Bible in your hands. So I hope I'm wrong about him on that, but I believe that he doesn't believe the King James Bible is 100% perfect. Yeah. But I hope I'm wrong about that. But see, that's a problem with people who start from something. And if you go online, people get really big on conspiracies. And because they start out with conspiracies, that's why they're totally wrong in a lot of doctrines that they'll teach, you're going to notice, especially end times, especially end times. You have them give an interpretation of Revelation, it's really bad, and there are some weird things. Now, I'm not going to name names, but some of you who are really into the Internet know what I'm talking about when you watch these channels, and they give interpretation of Revelation, and it's totally off out there. Yeah. It's totally off. Uh, so you got to understand this. That's why the proper foundation has to be the Bible first, Amen. not in the wisdom of this world. Yeah. It's got to be the Word of God. Now, let me give some verses that will be helpful to you for your life. Uh, this is an important verse. Look at Romans chapter 16, verse 19. So let's start off with Romans chapter 16 and verse 19. So as we see a lot of evil within our world, a lot of people, they're looking at the wrong thing, you understand. They're looking at the wrong thing. They're looking at the devil more than the Word of God, you understand. So they, you got to understand this, is that why would people be more infatuated with the devil than the Word of God? That's something you got to think about right there. We are to be aware of his system so we don't fall prey, but the thing is, is that it comes to a point where we see where your heart is now. It's not where you're studying the devil out and not being ignorant. It's now to a point where you're infatuated with knowing everything about him rather than God himself. Now look at Romans chapter 16, and we'll read verse 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I, I would have you, look at this, wise unto that which is good, and what? Simple concerning evil. So with concerning evil right here, 
You got to realize that you are not supposed to grow in knowledge concerning evil. I hope you understood that. Can I repeat that? You're not supposed to grow in knowledge concerning what is evil out there. What are you supposed to grow in knowledge on? If you read verse 19, that which is what? Good. It is a shame that you wouldn't know the nine fruits of the Spirit from memory, but you would know the 13 different uh, bloodlines of the Illuminati. It is a shame that you wouldn't know about uh, certain verses in your Bible. Can you quote me Romans 8, 28 from memory? Can you quote me John 3, 16 from memory? Can you quote me soul winning verses on how to lead a soul saved from hell? Or can you quote me sources and documentations of what you know concerning about 9-11 uh, being an inside job and other stuff? <laughs> that's good stuff. See, that's important to understand. Now, am I denying this stuff? No, I'm not denying a lot of stuff right here. But you got to understand this is that you see where people are putting their minds in. And you got to realize when you come into that level, now, if you guys are conspiracy buffers, you all can agree with me on this. If you dig so much on evil and get into the specifics of evil, you're not going to agree on something. Yeah. You're going to find differences amongst each other. And then that's why everyone has their own channel. And that's why everyone criticizes each other on who is the Antichrist. No, it's Obama. No, it's Trump. No, it's who cares? No, it's Nimrod. You know, there are people who actually say that. You got to understand this is that Getting outside of that kind of stuff, if you were to put your nose into the Bible, you've got the book right in your hand, plain as a nose on your face. And when you attend a Bible-believing church, that's where you can find more in unity. Because the Bible is not abstract here. It is clear from His Word. Whereas out there, everyone picks and chooses on sources and research, and it goes on and on and on. If you doubt me, then think about the scientists, even scientists through their research methods. They all disagree with each other on something. The reason why is because when you dig into philosophy, science, history, conspiracy, or any other knowledge out there, these are all the knowledge of men. you got to put your knowledge into the Word of God. And when you put your knowledge into the Word of God, that's where you can see plain as day what the Word of God says right here. Now, here's another thing is that if you think that God wants to get into specifics of evil, why did he say simple right here? So when I talk about certain things on conspiracies, for example, or philosophical arguments or even scientific arguments, I don't go that deep. All I do is take something that is simple or basic, but my final foundation has to be the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God is the final authority on everything. Go to Romans chapter 10, please. Romans chapter 10. <coughs> Romans chapter 10. Before I turn to Romans chapter 10, I would like to ask you this. If God really wanted you to know about 9-11 being an inside job, why didn't he say that in his book? If God wanted you to know that Trump or Obama would be the Antichrist, why didn't he say that in his book? If God really wanted you to know about who the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati are, why didn't he say that in his book? If God wanted you to know about who's the top of the pyramid in the Illuminati ladder, etc., why didn't he say that in his book? Why didn't he say all these other uh, conspiracies that you read concerning about the Bolshevik Revolution and about World War II or what really happened with the Round Table and all this kind of stuff, what they're putting in our food, the chemtrails and all that? You know, I see people passing out flyers concerning chemtrails, and these guys are Christians, and I'm like wondering, where's the Bible track with that? Oh, that's good. See what the problem is? The problem is, if God is interested in what they put in your food concerning chemtrails, concerning about all this kind of stuff about conspiracy, why didn't he say that in his word? Why didn't he say that if he thought it was that important? It is very important to know, Pastor. Well, apparently God doesn't think so. That's something to understand. What do you think God thinks is more important? Let me ask you this. Do you think Martin Luther and the Great Awakening Revivals knew about all this Illuminati conspiracy stuff? No. Hmm. That's something to think about. 
If God thought that was important, he would have made them know about that. But instead, if you look from beginning of church history to the end, what was it? It was all in the word of God. It was about winning souls to salvation. It was about getting together as a church and keep persevering. It is about verse by verse Bible studies from Genesis to Revelation. That's what you're going to find out. It's not all about this kind of conspiracy stuff. Why is that? Because we see right here one. So one, which we see right here, is that if those conspiracies are that important, you got to understand this. The Bible didn't think it as that important. God didn't give the specifics. But you notice that God does give the simplicity of it, right? For example, I can, I can figure out who's the top of the Illuminati pyramid because of what the Bible said about Revelation 17, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, other verses, that the ones who are going to be, that the ones who are going to be on the top is Rome. It's going to be Rome. That much I do know. But God didn't have to go through all the specifics on what happened uh, during the foundation of the Illuminati with Rothschilds and the superior Jesuit general and Adam Weishaupt. He didn't go through all of that. God didn't go through all the details of what happened with those evil things in the evil system, in the evil background, what they did in our schools, what they put in our food, what they did with our churches. He didn't go all into that. He only gave the simplicity of it. He only gave the simplicity of it, not the specifics. What does he give the specifics on, though? He gives the specifics on what is good, the Word of God. He wants you to grow in those specifics. If you think that God wants to go specifics with evil, my question to you is this, is that, my question to you is that, I don't think that God thought it that important, otherwise he'd give Satan his due. Do you think that God wants to give that much importance and significance to Satan? Or do you think he wants the stress and the importance on him? It's on him. That's why he's giving you his precious word. Look at Leviticus through Numbers. That's not conspiracies. It's specifics yeah. on insignificant detail you would think about tabernacle and altars. Yeah. Why would God talk so much about that one than about the details of Satan, his system, how he built the obelisk and the pyramids and stuff like that? He didn't do that. He gave the specifics on how to build my tabernacle, yeah. my Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> You know why God doesn't want to give any importance to Satan? Have you ever noticed wicked men online that they would uh, literally, what do they want? They want attention. They want you to know them. And some Bible-believing preachers are smart enough not to give them the time of the day. Why? Because we want to let them know you're not that important. I got bigger fish to fry. I got more important things to do. I got people hurting in church. I got souls that need to lead to salvation. And why would I waste time fussing like little children back and forth with you and pay attention Amen. to you? So there are some evil people out there, and you've seen the attacks in our church. They just want attention on themselves. That's, that's a sign of demon possession, where they would deliberately attack you, criticize you, and stuff like that so that you can pay attention to them. But you got to understand this. That's probably what Satan's doing. Satan, he's, he's using evil men within our system conspiracy or otherwise, so that you can pay attention to him. Yep. He, doesn't want, he wants your eyes to set off of Jesus Christ and want you to pay attention on him. And be, when your eyes go pay attention to the devil, you know what happens? What happened to the spirit of peace? Yeah. It now becomes fear. Yep. It becomes yeah. paranoia. And it does not become the spirit of love, joy, and peace like God intended. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then faith <clears throat> cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? Word of God. Now, let me ask you this, okay? Where did you dig up the stuff concerning evil? I know it's not from the Bible that you got that from. Yeah. Where did you get the stuff about 9-11, Rothschild, uh, all the other stuff going on in our conspiracy realm? The... Bohemian, uh, you got 
the Bohemian Grove. You got the bushes, the skull and bones, and all this kind of stuff. Where did you get that from? Did you get it from the Bible? Come on, be honest. Did you get it from the Bible? Or did you get it from uh, something that is not of the Bible, but someone else wants you to pay attention to? Yeah, come on. Come on. We all know, uh, if you're part of a conspiracy research, you do know, and you can agree with this, Facebook, YouTube, Google, Twitter, all this stuff is under the control of demonic forces. And my, my mind-boggling question is, then why do you turn to this so much as your authority? That's good. Amen, brother. Rather than uh, the Word of God. How many times have you been listening things to right here rather than this one that's right in front of your face all that time? Amen. See, that's something important to understand. When God wants you to be aware of the attacks of the wicked one, he didn't want you to know all the specifics. Yep. He just wants you to know there's an enemy out there, just be aware. That's it. He didn't want you to know how he did it in every detail and what to do and when and who was behind and all that. No, God doesn't give the time of day on that one. That's why in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he doesn't name the Antichrist. He doesn't name the false prophet. They're not that important to him. But the world thinks that the false prophet is important. The Antichrist is important. They want to know all about his story, all about his background. That's why they are infatuated and they will worship him. But God, he wants you to know him. What about me, child? What was I doing for all eternity? What did I do to love you, die for you? What do you hear me talking to you right now in a still small voice? Or are you still hearing an electronic thing going off of your system that you're listening to, watching it? See, that is very important to understand. So God, he wants you to put your faith in his word, not on the devil's system. Why would you... Put faith in the devil's system rather than on him. As a mind-boggling thing that I don't understand. That's the reason why what you've got to understand is that you've got to shut that thing off and you've got to put your nose in the book. And yes, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. God can use anything out there to get you pay attention to his word, to get you into church, to get you to serve him. I have quite a few members right here who are getting into the conspiracy realm, and because of that, it led them to the Bible. It led them to church. But see, that's what it should do. It should lead you to the book and make you stay there, Amen. not go back and start from scratch again, going through all the things online. That is very important to understand. God is using anything of this world, science, history, math, philosophy, uh, internet, conspiracy, anything like that. God will use anything to lead you to him. But that's what he wants you to do. It, he wants you to lead you to him and to his word. And f once you're there, to grow in the word. Not grow more in science, not grow more in conspiracy, not grow more in history, philosophy. Grow in the word. Grow in the word. That's what he wants you to do. I can give you testimonies and stories, and some of these people will do a better job than me of I mean, I had some of these people, they were really into, they knew all this kind of stuff. And they knew stuff that I didn't even know about, they talked to me. But they knew the difference. Once they were paying attention to Jesus Christ working yep. in the church and in their life, they got into soul winning more actively, helping out the church, they started to see it more clearly. Right. And then after that, now they became like one of the greatest assets in my church. And now, they're, now their nose is into that book. Now their nose is into growing and helping out people. Here's another thing. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's assume that you're right with all the information and you have all the right knowledge. That doesn't mean that it's going to amount to anything. Can I repeat that? Amen. Can I repeat this? Even if you have all the knowledge right, it's not going to amount to anything. In fact, it can even become nothing. God's going to discount everything. No matter how much you studied and researched, He's going to discount everything. You might say, why is that? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 2. <clears throat> and though I have the gift of prophecy. Wow, a lot of people are into prophecy nowadays, right? 
yeah, end time stuff like that. And understand all mysteries. Boy, don't we want to know all the mysterious theories out there. Yeah. Don't we want to know all the mystery of iniquity? And all knowledge. So even if you have all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not what? Charity, I am what? Nothing. Nothing. You want me to show you a stronger one? Look at verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it what? Profited me nothing. You can even burn yourself at the stake for Jesus Christ. Die for him, and it counts as absolutely nothing. Why? Without this one important element. And those of you who've been in my church for several years, and then you start to prioritize on the right things, you know what, you know, and you can understand what I'm going to say right here. It's charity. Charity changed your life. What's charity? It's giving. And it's to others. When you start to think about other people, there are a lot more things you shut your mouth on now, didn't you? There are a lot more things that you started to be less nitpicky on, didn't you? Amen. When you start to prioritize and think about others. Not only that, this preacher is a sinner. He's imperfect. He can make mistakes. But didn't that make you also try to support the pastor and not critique either, right? Mm -hmm. You know why? You're thinking about giving. Giving and others. Others. And when you do that, that is charity. Do you know what's the greatest gift in the Bible above hope and above faith? It's charity. The last verse, uh, uh, thir 13, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these threes, but the greatest of these is what? Charity. charity. If you think so, then let me ask you this question. If you think that all the knowledge of God was that important, I'm going to tell you something right here. If God was all knowledge instead of charity, why would he even die on the cross for us and save our souls from hell? And that became the most important thing to us. You know what became the most important thing to us? It wasn't all the knowledge of God. It was his love for us that saved my soul and your soul from hell. But who is all about knowledge when you go back to Genesis 3? The serpent in the garden. He's all about knowledge. He's all about knowledge. That's higher education. Higher education is all about knowledge. That was the Gnostics that time. That was the Greek philosopher. That was the Egyptians back then, all that evil. That's even the elites today. The Masonic lodges and oaths, that's what it's all about. It's about higher learning knowledge. See that? But what does it lead you into at the end? It leads you down a rabbit hole and now you've gotten your focus away from what you've got to do. It's giving to others. That's the number one thing you've got to do. And how you can do that in Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. And look at verse 13. Romans 14, 13. Think about this. Now a lot of people don't think about this. And that's why when you're fellowshipping with other people, you don't get along. And you got nothing but the internet to turn to. You know what's very disgusting and sad? Is that in live stream, the greatest example is live stream. I'm going to give you two great examples. The greatest example is live stream. Because when we do live stream and open up chats, you know, what's, you know what, do you, what you see? Do you see unity oh, or confusion? Wow. Oh, that's confusion. Good. Do you know why? Everyone did, has their own knowledge out there. Yeah, that's good. And they're not thinking about charity, giving to others. What can I do to be a blessing to anybody else over there? Everyone thinks they're right in the live stream. And it's just chaos. I can even name you some Bible-believing live streams, which I won't name. But I've seen the comments, and it's like, oh my goodness, what is this? And it made me glad that we shut off our comments on live stream. We started at the beginning. If you don't believe me, we started comments on live stream. I had two to three guys back there all trying to take care of the live stream. That was that bad. It was that bad. It was a circus. It was a circus. Now, let's, let me read verse 13 here. 
Let us not therefore judge another anymore, but judge this rather. This is what you should be judging and focusing. That no man put a what? Stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. That's important. Look at verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Look at what Paul said. Let everyone stand what, they're, what they fully persuaded on in their conviction. Verse 6, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. See, there are people with differences here. People with differences. Verse 7, for none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto who? The Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord. So Paul's saying this. God gave everyone different convictions. This was during the time of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul. So if Christians had this much trouble back then, you can only imagine now how much worse it's gotten because everyone has free access to knowledge out there. So it's even worse. So this is Romans 14. This is what I recommend for you to do. You should have a verse-by-verse -verse study on Romans 14. I even have it online. You can watch it online. Some of my people who attended my Romans 14 class, they can tell you it changed everything out there. Romans 14 is salient so that brethren in Christ can unify each other in fellowship rather than having their own knowledge that can stumble a person. You got to be careful with how you talk and fellowship around other people. Is are people going to feel uneasy around you on what you say? Are they going to feel weird around you on what you say? Or will they feel encouraged? Will they feel loved? Will they feel this is like a family? What are you doing in your conversation among the brethren? That's why it's got to be Romans 14, 13. Now let me give a second example here. And the only people who probably can understand that is those who attended the blowout. Now, in the blowout, weren't we all just lost in, in unifying with one another, encouraging each other, helping one another, and then serving God together? Yeah. Wasn't that the event that made you feel closer to Jesus Christ than what you were researching online? Yeah. Hmm, there's a stark difference. Why? Because this one side is knowledge, the other side is charity. And in that charity event that we held together, if you actually watched online, rather than sit down in person and be of the same mind and spirit with the brethren, if you just listen online, you know what you can do? You can nitpick and find problem with all of our preachers easily. Amen. You can do that. Yeah. It's really easy. And perhaps some of you may have caught it too, and you might go, well, that's kind of weird. Why would they do that? But what did you do? Did you make a big deal out of it, or you just ignored it because you were just too busy in being lost with the joy and fellowship with the brethren? That's how we become stronger, church. That's how we become stronger. Love covereth the multitude of sins, it says. That's extremely important. Where, is, where are your focus on? That's why. Why do I tell onliners this? You need to go to church. It is so important. And the ones who are evidence of that are the people here who looked at all kinds of stuff online and stayed here for several years. They will tell you that church makes a big difference compared to being alone at home and watching online. It will change your life completely. And when I send you to these churches and I give you these churches, you don't want to be the so-and-so in the church that is the stumbling block to the brethren. At Romans 14 you want to be the blessing you want to be the help you got to be careful what you say around people see knowledge puffeth up the Bible says but charity edifieth you want knowledge is it's all just about puffing up all that you know but what good is all that when you talk to somebody what is what is their impression it's just showing you all you know that's it but the Bible says but charity edifieth what does that mean it's helping another person. It's helping another person. That's the point. You got to understand this, folks, is that that's what I am as a pastor. What I am as a pastor is trying to help people out there. That's what you see 
in the church right here, and that's how it should be. It's not a round table discussion about UFOs and stuff like that. It's a table of fellowship because we're focusing on the other person and how I can be a blessing to that person. Because a first time visitor who comes in is a totally different character from another member in our church who's been in our church for 10 years. It is a totally different thing. All we are is prioritizing and focusing on the other. And that's how we can bond better as a church and become a great family together. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more, why? As he see the day approaching. If you want to be prepared for the last days and the end times, the verse says this, in order to be prepared, it's to not forsake when Christians assemble together. And when you assemble together, it's not puffing up each other's knowledge, but exhorting one another. Exhort means to support, to lift up. That's what it should be. Do you know when we should judge and be nitpicky and divide the line? Not on differences, not on people's imperfections. It's when it's a major sin and a major heresy that clearly contradicts and blasphemes this book. That's when we cross the line and say no, right there. Other than that, you got to realize this. Everybody's different. Everybody's imperfect. And if, if you're going to survive as a church, especially as we hit the last days of apostasy, you better learn to start thinking about others, not yourself. Amen. 